friends we are in Iowa once again today it's snowing once again today and it's very 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 cold once again today but we're going to Mason City because when I was a kid I loved the musical the music man and we're gonna go to see Meredith Wilson's hometown the man who wrote and composed all the music and the words and everything and see the town that River City was based off of days with Jordan the lion it begins now great snowman here in Mason City so right here you see a sign noting that this is Music Man Square they have a statue of Meredith Wilson and his boyhood home is right there so it's all part of our day today as well as his grave he wrote not only the Music Man but unsinkable Molly Brown the fight song for two of the colleges here in Iowa. So we'll see that after we go inside for the tour. If you've ever heard the Gary Indiana song or 76 trombones, those are from the Music Man, but also Till There Was You. They have him as the band leader, basically like Harold Hill, Professor Harold Hill and a memorial there about the music man the score resounds the spirit of river city meredith wilson may 18th 1902 to june 15th 1984. a generous heart is his legacy so apparently inside this building they have recreated the town take a look at this we're gonna tour it. There's a whole museum in here, but I was not kidding. They recreated all of River City when he enters town hopping off that train because they're t all the salesmen on the train are talking about him. He hops off and starts working his way through town past all these. So hopefully we'll get to see the pool hall and the candy kitchen and all that. That is Miss Peru's gift shop. You have Marion's house is actually the gift shop here. That's the front porch of the Perus. How many songs would have broken out on that porch? And look over here in this window. Is this piano given? Where's Amaryllis? So here you can see some of the famous songs that he's known for. Like, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, Till There Was You, All of the Music Man. May the good Lord bless and keep you. The Music Man Square. So now we're going to start exploring some of the street and what's interesting is they said, you know, some of these buildings, they might not have been too prominent in the movie, but if you watch very carefully, they are in there in various little scenes. So that's kind of one of the really cool things that they've done. And up there you can see they've got Mason City band uniforms since Meredith Wilson was from here. That's the toy store and they were telling us that the story on this whole project and everything was that the um, I guess many years ago they decided they wanted to do this so they raised five million dollars to build it and Meredith Wilson's widow ended up contributing and matching an additional five million So here's the women's wear. You can just see Mrs. Shin coming out of there. Another thing they said is that they had a lot of instruments in the museum on loan that are mentioned in 76 trombones, but that um, the museum that had loaned them all the instruments made additions and they were able to they were able to take the instruments back so there's some empty space in the museum. Here they have a recreation of the River City High School. Only thing missing are those front steps we see. 
Tommy G list running out of. And look at this, they have a time capsule. The, uh, this is an event center also, the high school. You can actually rent this museum out for events. But yeah, there's a great time capsule here that says, to be opened on the 100th year anniversary of the premiere of Meredith Wilson's The Music Man in Mason City, Iowa. There's the mercantile. And then what I love is right around the corner when you're going to enter the museum, it's actually Marcellus, Marcellus Washburn. I'd know that voice anywhere. That's the livery stables where when Professor Harold Hill comes to town, he's looking for, looking to hire a rig. And he says, I'm looking for rigs. There ain't nobody by that name here. Marcellus used to run with quote unquote Gregory, who's Professor Hill. Now here we have the barber shop because the school board members all hate each other at the beginning of the movie, but Professor Harold Hill ends up turning him into a barbershop quartet. And the music on the stand is the, oh, oh, the Wells Fargo wagon is a coming down the street. <laughs> then here we have the barbershop. River City Barbershop. I just absolutely love this. To me, this is just one of the coolest things I've ever seen in any museum, the kind of care that they've taken in creating it. And then there's the park. We see all the scenes from the movie that take place in Madison Park. That also is a performance space. Look how great this is. The ceiling has 76 trombones and they're ready for a performance. And then look at the backdrop. One Grecian urn. <laughs> look at all those trombones. If you've never seen The Music Man, if you like musicals, to me, I think it's just brilliant. I love the, I love all the lyrics and I love the story and I love the, the actual way that the music fits with the, the way they do like train sounds and different things like that into the music and into the story. Look, they even have a fun pick opportunity to be the music man and Miss Marion. Here's the River City Bank. Right next to it's the Candy Kitchen where Professor Harold Hill tells Tommy Gilas to take Zanita when she's supposed to be doing other things. They have a full candy kitchen. <laughs> he graduated Mesa City High School in 1919. Um, the Please All Billiard Parlor is the basis of, of the, you know, you got trouble, my friend. Okay. The pool ball. The Ransom or Please All Billiard Parlor was based directly on Ransom's Please All Billiard Parlor here in Mason City. Oh, cool. It remains, and it's just about three blocks away, and it's being run by the fifth generation of Ransom's. That's crazy. The first Ransom was a Civil War veteran who came home after the war and started a cigar store. Ah. And that cigar, Indian, is dedicated or is a, a part of the legacy of the of the Ransoms. Now, the Ransoms, did they ever, were any of them ever mayor like in the movie where Mayor Shin owns the billiard parlor? That I doubt. I, I don't believe I've heard that one. But, um, but they've been here for five generations. I, mm -hmm. I met the current proprietor and I've been in there didn't play pool, but they have some really nice uh, Brunswick, were they, um, tables? Yeah. Hmm. And then yeah. Ethel Toffelmeyer's Bakery. That's Marcellus's girl, R.A. Washburn. Mr. Dunlop's Grocery. And they actually, I mean, every single one of these has a little bit of 
something inside. If it's a dress store, it has some dresses. If it's a candy shop, it has some candy stuff. <laughs> and then here's the billiard parlor. That's what he uses to get everybody all riled up in town thinking they need a boys band. Next thing you know, we'll be reading Captain Billy's whiz bang. That's also great when the sheriff says, you only made a couple mistakes. The mayor owns that billiard parlor. Cause they see the billiard parlor table getting delivered. Surely they must've seen pool before. Nope, only billiards. Then as we go around the corner, they've got a cigar store Indian. Right next to Mayor Shin's billiard parlor. The fire department. And then the opera house. And they've got a big popcorn coach here. And that is from Mason City High School, 1919, class of 1919. Meredith was born 1902, so that would have been his graduating class. Now I wanna work my way back over to the library stable, and see the museum they have in here. How cool is this place? <laughs> and I love that they have street lamps going all the way down. This would have, in the movie, it's called Center Street, so we would be on the real Center Street because remember when Sunita says that her parents are gonna be shopping up and down Center Street all day long. So let's go in the Stables, see the museum. That, they've got his piano. As soon as you walk in, Baldwin piano. It's funny if you read what Buddy Hackett sent. It says, Dear Mr. Dear Dr. Miller, the Russian Soviet press was interviewing the cast. I spoke to a Soviet reporter through an interpreter. He asked, how did you come to be in this film? I replied, I had an auto accident and hurt somebody. The police told me I had to go to jail or be in a movie. Well, I chose to be in the movie, that's how. In an hour, I was in Jack Warner's office who said to me, we all know you're crazy, but are you crazy? I told him we get more press this way and I can always prove I'm crazy, but never that I'm normal. He never let me be interviewed by the Soviets again. There's the sheet music for 76 trombones. You gotta know the territory. So there's a picture of John Philip Sousa because Meredith Wilson not only played in John Philip Sousa's band, his brother also played in the band with him. So they were the only two brothers to ever be in the band, but I believe Meredith was the only member to get in the band without auditioning. His flute teacher told John Philip Sousa how good Meredith was and he got in There's Meredith's chair with another piano. And then there's his office. Look at all those awards and the desk. He was married three times and his, his first wife he was with for, I guess they said 23 years and she got tired of him never being home. And then he married a Russian opera singer that he was madly in love with until she passed away of cancer after 16 years. And then he married his secretary and was with her for the last remaining, I think 13 years, something like that. And his last wife was the one who's donated a lot of his artifacts to the museum. There's script from unsinkable Molly Brown over here. His original script. He did the music for that. Starring Debbie Reynolds in the movie. Debbie loved this. She wanted this part so bad. This is showing some of the casting and everyone that was in the Music Man, the stage play originally. And here's a blackboard that Meredith had diagrammed how he wanted the final scene to be on stage on a chalkboard. 
<laughs> this is showing Dick Van Dyke as the music man performing in South Dakota. Really? Wow. There's the gold record from the music man and his Grammy award over there with a picture of him looking at the Grammy Award. And here he is holding that gold record. Professor Harold Hill, Robert Preston, and a young Ronnie Howard playing Winthrop. Here they have Amaryllis' house. As you walk through the museum, that's pretty cool. I was like, oh wow. <laughs> That's where we first see Miss Marion giving lessons and see Amaryllis running around the front of this house. But this is where they also had some other exhibits in here that I was telling you that got removed. Wow, looks so cool seeing exact recreation from the movie. I'm a huge fan of the movie, so. And then this is Charlie Chaplin. The Wilson family was involved in Chaplin's movies. I believe Meredith did some of the score for The Great Dictator. So that's a Charlie Chaplin wax figure. Yeah, right there it says that uh, Charlie first talkie, he got a score that earned Meredith Wilson an Academy Award nomination because Meredith did the musical score for it. And he said, I can't say that I see eye to eye with Mr. Chaplin. I think he's a very selfish and in many ways inconsiderate man, but I also think he's a great artist. And I will certainly say that it was a real pleasure to watch him day after day and see him tick. There they are, Meredith and Charlie and the orchestra. All right, now we're gonna go over and visit the boy at home next door. And now we get to go in the boyhood home. It's been restored by volunteers of the town, which is really cool. He lived here till he was 17. Meredith Wilson Bay. The tour of this was actually not open this time of the year, but if you called in advance, they made special arrangements, so a handful of us booked it. <laughs> I love it. That's a collectible, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Wilsons were the first people to live here. It had running water and electricity. Wow. 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 Um, yeah, that was, it, it's, a, <laughs> it's a very nice house. Was um, that uncommon they were, for all the houses around here at the time too? Um, they were, this was one of the nicer, but yeah, this was, this was a. I wonder what his folks did to get into a <laughs> get all this money. Electricity, yeah. Um, his dad was a lawyer and then a businessman. But the real money came from his grandfather, who went out to the California Gold Rush, and actually came back with money. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, I have the doors all the Master bedroom. This is where it all began. <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. Where, this is where he was conceived, huh? This is where he was born. Oh. So this is the master bedroom. Um, oh my parents' room. Every bedroom up here has a closet, which costs them extra every year at tax time. So there's little, little, little luxury things. In here. Really, closet is ever born in the state of Iowa at that time. How big was he? Still the biggest baby on record in this county. Wow. What? How would it be? Wow. Fourteen six. Oh my gosh! Wow, Meredith, oh, good grief! Could he fit in that crib? Well, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, he was probably walking when he came out. <laughs> 1902. Because if that had been her first delivery, it would be awful. But she wouldn't have made it. I don't think. So there's Meredith's room. Now here's another. Here's another steam. I think. Yeah, this is where another steam heat room. Sweet for a flute. Quite the virtuoso. Looks like a two boat back there. And this coronet. Winthrop's coronet. Which that time really good. Um, in fact, her mom died later that year. Oh. 
Um, so who is this? The next week he went to New York on the train by himself. I'm like, no. uh, <laughs> it just freaks me out. Went to Juilliard for a year. Oh, Juilliard. Juilliard. Oh, my, okay. The only dorm that Juilliard someone now has, they named after him. But someone paid for Juilliard. Because we have a friend that couldn't afford it. Well, his pair. His pair. His pair. dad's a lot of money. Yeah. I know, but his dad didn't like him, he said. But he paid for it. I, I think his, his dad knew that he was probably in bad enough order in the town already. <laughs> mm. Meredith was here for the Bicentennial for band festival that year, and he directed the municipal band oh. and a couple of his compositions. Um, and I was in this band, okay? So, I don't know what you'd call this serendipity, but the first chair flute was on vacation that weekend. I have loved her ever since. Mm -hmm. So here I am, first chair flute, 20 years old. Oh. Meredith Wilson is standing right there on the podium. We were all just agog. I mean, so. I don't know how we played anything really. And of uh, the music man arrangement, he turned around and said, May I see your flute? Uh, uh, yeah, you can have it, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know what to do. You know. <laughs> um, and, but he was very charming, very nice, just, you know, and natural. You know, he wasn't like, you know, well, hey. He's like, oh, hey, this is a good one, uh, you know, which I told my dad later because I had to talk him into buying that. <laughs> and um, <laughs> talked to me a little, talked to the crowd a little, played a little Stars and Stripes on the uh, flute. And your flute? flute? On my flute, uh, before he gave it back. <laughs> I was sitting down, thank heavens, but uh, um, yeah, it was wild. It was, uh, there's a picture, there was a picture in the paper of him conducting, and you can just, it's the perfect picture of my back. <laughs> <laughs> On the ground floor. I did the upstairs in the trees the other day. And, um, but this was where Mrs. Wilson taught piano. That was one of her things. She also started the Humane Society here, started the uh, first kindergarten in town. Um, she was quite the mover and shaker, actually. Mm -hmm. You can see her here with her two boys Aww. at the piano. <laughs> These are instruments owned by family members. Warner Brothers wanted, you're going to love this, Frank Sinatra. Oh. To be Harold Hill? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but Danny so. Kaye was in the running. Um, my brain's going to go. The Scarecrow, the guy who did the Scarecrow. Ray Bolger. Uh, yeah, Ray Bolger. Yeah. The guy who wanted it. And this really makes me sick. Was Milton Berle? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I know. Milty? No, no. 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 <laughs> I, you know, but I guess Preston came in and they had him do the, the trouble song for audition because that was the hardest one. And Preston came in and just blew, blew it away. away. Uh, you know, and they're like, "You're it." <laughs> and call with these were the better days. I'm home again, bros. <laughs> now, that line, of course, is in the song Light of Rose. Rose was a nickname for Rosalie. Lyda was the name of his mother's sister. So he just basically took his life in. The Light of Rose song, yeah. yeah. So when we were over at the museum, I asked if they happened to have any of the original costumes, and they said that they didn't. But if we came over and asked at the public library, we might find a surprise. So the women at the public library are going to show us one of the original uniforms from the movie. The very last scene when they get the, they do a flash to the really nice uniforms. A lot of them were destroyed in a fire because Warner Brothers kept them, but they have one here. She said, you're in luck. We just put it away so I know where it's at. I was on loan to the University of Iowa. Oh, okay. and it just There it away. is. They just got like it back from being on loan. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. And a photo still showing the uniforms. Wow. 
it's a little bit faded. Well, yeah, but, but wow, that's so cool to see. Let's lay this out so we can stretch out the sleeves. You see, it's all faded or it was folded for display. But so many of those didn't survive. That's so cool. And it's yeah. definitely one of the little, little yeah, one of the children. like maybe Winthrop's. <laughs> And the pants. the pants. There's the back of it. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Oh yeah, I was wondering if there'd be any kind mm -hmm. of costume tag. March, you can see on there it says March of 61. Mm -hmm. Here's the top and the bottoms and 76 trombones. Mm -hmm. If you remember from the music man, he keeps trying to get Miss Marion to meet him over at the footbridge. They have a Meredith Wilson footbridge here. It was actually here when he was growing up. Just look for these little face statues here. And there it is. You can see a little bit from the side. The Music Man footbridge. Well, we've made our way over to Elmwood St. Joseph Municipal Cemetery to visit Meredith Wilson's final resting place. And it shouldn't be too hard to find. He's got a pretty good size plot there. So we had to find the Greenwood section of the cemetery and there's a historical plaque out here, actually at his grave. And you can see, it's got like two bird baths. Or I'm not sure what those are actually. That is definitely his headstone. You can see it says Wilson right there. And then here it says, Meredith Wilson, born and raised in Mason City, Iowa, as you guys found out through this vlog. He always loved music and followed high school graduation in 1919. He studied music at the Damrosh Institute in New York City, now the Juilliard School. He realized his dream of playing in the John Philip Sousa Band as a principal flutist. Later, he was the principal flutist with the New York Philharmonic. He worked in radio from 1926 to 1953, including for the Armed Forces Radio Services. Meredith started composing music in the 1920s, ranging from a symphony of San Francisco to the Chicken Fat Song, to three hit Broadway shows, The Music Man, Unsinkable Molly Brown, and Here's Love, now called Miracle on 34th Street, the musical. The Music Man had 1,375 Broadway performances and won six Tony Awards. It has performed yearly in over 300 communities. The movie premiered in Mason City in 1962 during the band festival. President Kennedy presented Meredith Wilson with the National Big Brother Award and President Reagan awarded him the Presidential Medal of Freedom. What a life. And what not noted here, he wrote the musical score to Charlie Chaplin's The Great Dictator, apparently. Rest in peace, Meredith Wilson. Thank you for all the great music. Including, like I said, one of my all-time favorite songs, Till There Was You. All right, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. I hope you all enjoyed this day. We got to see the museum recreation of the Music Man set. We got to see inside his house. We got to see his museum. We got to see all kinds of stuff, including his grave. Hope you enjoyed this. If you've never seen the Music Man, you should. It's funny, it's great, and I love it. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great night, and uh, from River City, goodbye.